Okay, today we are going to convert a scanned image into a vector image. And so we have a JPEG of a drawing that we did by hand that we then want to convert into a digital format so that we can manipulate it and change it and um, work with it in any designs that we have going forward. It's always a good idea to sketch out ideas. Um, a lot of people are really comfortable drawing with pencil then converting to digital from there. Um, and it's a, just a different way of getting stuff that you do, getting ideas that you have on paper into digital format easily without having to redo the whole process. So first I'm going to open Photoshop um, and I'm going to open my scanned image. Uh, you can take a photograph with your phone. You can scan it on a scanner you know, that we can do at school. Either way, however you get it, you want it in JPEG format. And then once in Photoshop, over to the left-hand side, I'm going to go to my crop tool. Okay, it looks like that, uh, like two L's kind of overlapping each other. I'm going to go to my crop tool. I'm going to click on it and hold it down. And I want to use the perspective crop tool. The reason I want the perspective crop tool is it allows me to take images that are skewed a little bit, like this one. Uh, you'll notice that the image itself, when it's scanned, is a little crooked in here. I've also got the spirals in here that I don't want in my my image once we convert it to, to digital. So I'm going to go in to that crop tool. I'm going to choose perspective crop tool. So what perspective crop tool is going to allow me to do is I'm going to start by drawing a basic square, what I want. But you'll notice it starts to cut stuff out over here. So I, this allows me to take this one anchor point and bring it out like that. Um, I can then take this and bring it down a little bit. It allows me to take single anchor points in this and move them so that I can start to eliminate some of the stuff I don't really want, like those edges of the page on the right-hand side and the spirals on the left-hand side. So you'll notice that it's kind of skewed a little bit, and that's fine because when I hit Enter, it's now going to take that and it's going to make it it's going to square off its edges so it's going to write it um, how we want it to then i'm going to go in and i'm going to file i'm going to go to file and i go to save as and then i'm, I'm going to i don't want to overwrite my original image i want to keep that in case i need to use it again um, then i'm just going to save this as cropped too the reason i i'm doing that is because i already have one that's called vine border cropped so I'm just going to save and that'll and hit OK. And that'll keep this as a saved image. So now I can I can get out of Photoshop and I can open Illustrator. I'm going to create a new document. Um, and for this, <clears throat> if this is an element I'm going to use repeatedly, um, then I'm going to create a new document and save it as its own element so that I can pull it into different things later. If you are doing this on just a new logo that you're designing or a new poster or something that you're designing, you want this to be the only place it's used, then when you create new, you're going to create your full artboard. Okay. For this, I'm just going to kind of do a generic art preset artboard that's already filled in. should be set to 8.5 by 11. Um, I'm going to call this vine border. And eight and a half by 11, this is inches. My orientation for this doesn't really matter, so we'll just keep it vertically. And I'll hit create. Again, the size of your artboard kind of depends on what you're going to be using it for. If you're developing a poster, obviously you want larger than eight by 11. If you're doing logos and business cards or something like that, you're going to do a little bit smaller, smaller artboard. Okay, so I've got this. Now I want to place that image that I just cropped in Photoshop. So I'm going to go to File, and I want to place. If I hit Open, it's going to open that image as a new, as a new um, tab up here. I want to place it in this one. So I go to Place, and it's going to open up this. And I'm just going to choose Vine Border Cropped 2. I'm going to click on Place, and it's going to give me this thumbnail. When I click this thumb, I'm going to, if I were to click it over here, it would drop my photo over there. If I I want it on the artboard, so I'm going to click it here, and it will be the upper left-hand corner 
is where your, your cursor is. So I'm just going to move this and center it a little bit. There's two ways we can go about doing this. Uh, the first way is I can take my scanned image uh, and it is a layer. Okay, Then I can lock that layer in place and create a new one over it. Uh, then I can go zoom in do this smaller part over here and I can take my pen tool which we've used before um, and I can use my pen tool and I can start to actually draw and trace my lines um, with this you'll notice I'm doing it so that I can create my curves so I'm always going to go back and click on my anchor point so that my new curve is from my previous anchor point and I'm not really affecting my previous anchor point much at all. Each line is its kind of own thing. Now you'll notice it fills in with the black. In between, I could have done no fill um, on this, but I'm just going to go in and I'm just going to trace just going to start to trace my lines that I've already got drawn. So as you go along, I probably want to take my make sure that fill is not there so that I'm just following my lines like this and it would this allows me to I can choose different smaller segments to do I can choose larger you know I can trace the whole thing it's going to give me a little bit cleaner line because I'm making the whole thing myself. It's also going to fill this in pretty heavily. Um, so that's one way in which you can start to do this. right? It allows you to do smaller sections. It allows you to, to create a little bit cleaner line. Right? The other way to do it is I'm going to go back to my original layer. I'm going to just kind of delete my drawn one here. I'm going to go back and I'm going to turn this actual scan into a drawing. So I'm going to select this and I'm going to go up to Image Trace. Image Trace can be found usually in both places. Uh, you can go to Window and it's going to be one of your options in here, Image Trace, which would then open up a dialog box. Or I can go up here and click on this drop down menu. It's going to give me some different options. For this, I want to do sketched art, and what that's going to do is it's going to get rid of all this stuff in the background, like this graying at the edges. That's still from my initial photo. Um, if I do sketched art, it's really just going to highlight the pencil or marker drawing that I had, um, and it'll get rid of that other stuff. It takes a little bit to get to to do it and for it to go through, um, so give it a minute or two. Um, and actually, went faster than expected. So <clears throat> with this, you'll notice it is much darker. All that other stuff is gone from the background. That little light pencil line that was there is now gone. Uh, that graying at the corners is now gone. But in order for me to work with these pieces individually, um, right now it's just kind of saved like that. I need to go up to, on my um, taskbar up here, there's the expand option. If you don't have it on the taskbar up top, you go to Object and then click Expand. Okay, both work. They both do the same thing. This is just a little bit faster, so you don't have to go through menus. If that isn't there, though, you can go to Object and then click on Expand. Okay, so I'm going to click on Expand, and what that's going to do is it's going to turn these into line drawings. Right now, both of these are all grouped as one. If I choose my direct selection tool, you'll notice it has all its anchor points. Okay, if I go back to my, I don't want to have these 
move together all the time. I may want to separate them if I'm working on a larger page or I may want to expand one and not the other. So <clears throat> before I start manipulating my anchor points with my selection tool chosen, I'm going to go to object. I'm going to ungroup. Okay, and that's going to separate the two so that I can now move one and not have to move both. Okay, it also allows me to work on one and not the other. So with my direct selection tool then, you can see all the anchor points that are in this object now, or in this one drawing. So I'm going to zoom in. Um, <clears throat> this allows me then I can come in and I can manipulate. I can manipulate these a little bit. If I really want this to kind of come out more, I can grab those and drag my anchor points out. All right, and I can really manipulate my image that's already there. I can play with my anchor points, uh, make this a lot larger if I want to, make it smaller. All right. The other thing it allows me to do is, I'm just gonna go get rid of what I just did. Um, in your pen tool, if you click on that, you see add anchor point and delete anchor point, which we worked with a little bit before. So if I have a space in here that I don't want, I can choose my delete anchor point. Okay, if I don't really like this coming out here, I can get rid of it. I can just delete these anchor points. You know, and get rid of it. And kind of erase what's there and then I just have a smaller version. You know, If I want to get rid of it completely, I'd take my anchor points all the way down to here. This kind of just makes it a little bit smaller. If I wanted to, I could also add anchor points. So I can come in here if I want to make this section a little bit, a little bit thicker. I can get on the path, add an anchor point, you know, and start to pull that out a little bit. And then go back and manipulate those new anchor points. Okay, so it allows you to then go back and, and change things and manipulate things. Um, if you want a smoother curve, you add some anchor points, or if you want to you know, make this part a little bit bigger, you can go in and play with that with your direct selection tool um, and really manipulate what you've already got drawn by hand so that it fits a little bit better digitally. Okay, These white spots, if I want to get rid of those and make it solid black, I can go in and isolate those and just delete them. Go into isolation mode, highlight them, and delete them. And that's just kind of the imperfections in my initial drawing that I had. Um, and this just would clean it up a little bit so that my my vines that I've got here are a little more solid. Um, obviously you can leave them in there if you like what how that looks uh, but this just kind of allows you to play with it a little bit and move it around. Okay I can also then you know if I need to if I want to I can expand my height and I can expand the width so that it makes it a little bit bigger and so on. Um, these are all just little pieces that were there from the initial tracing and scan. Yeah, and I can get rid of those just by highlighting them and deleting them. Okay, so <clears throat> that is how you take a hand-drawn image and can digitize it so that you're able to use it for your designs or manipulate it into your new designs um, and, and use it how you want.